Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Please, please, please do consider subscribing if you have not already. I truly appreciate it and I will try to make more videos in the coming days, weeks, and months. I'm not going to leave you, uh, you know, behind or in the dust because of the holidays. I am trying to upload as much as I can, when I can, when I'm free. Just got a lot going on. So please, please, please do consider subscribing. All right, let's get right into it. So this is Wayfair and this is an internet company it's an online furniture retailer so they sell physical goods but it's a pretty good company as far as where they fit in they fit in between ikea and amazon and they've definitely made themselves a little market and a little niche in this market so they're definitely taking market share and i think it's a pretty great company they actually are um, headquartered in boston that's the city that's closest to where i live and so i think that's a pretty good company and let's get right into them so Analyst price targets, the average, is $276. And basically where we ended on uh, this past Friday, uh, December 10th, 2021, at $202, that is a 36.65% upside. It's basically a hold where there are five buys, seven holds, and two sell ratings. So that's pretty good. Um, if we look at uh, the stock analysis, it is an underperformer, but I do I, I, again, it, how many people are going to be moving to fully remote or hybrid work? They're going to need to continuously buy new furniture to make sure their house is up to date and looks good. As much as you might hear about the, um, you know, the housing market and how Home Depot and Lowe's are impacted because people are doing all the do-it-yourself projects on their house now that they're home and they want to make their home look better so they can just, you know, have a great place to work. Um, you know, as well as if they want to sell it then it looks nice and it looks better and it's what people you know want to see is more updates it's going to be the same thing for home and i just think that you know we're so early as far as like an uh, uh a year and a half into the pandemic that this isn't going to go away there's going to be a need for the wayfares ikeas amazons targets there's going to be a need for these especially going forward because people are going to spend the people that are able to work from home and be hybrid they're going to spend and they're going to need this type of company's you know, product. So let's get right into the income statement. For the income statement, we actually, I mean, this is just, this is incredible. So you can see like since 2015, uh, where Wafer had 2.2 billion, they've consistently grown revenue, but in six years to go from 2 billion to 14 billion look at that jump even just between 2019 and 2020 talk about like a company of the year as far as like revenue growth that is insane that is so good and it's so good to see and even pre-pandemic to have climbed to almost 10 billion dollars you know it makes sense that it really went up um when the pandemic you know started um it was a real winner of the pandemic like truly um and so if we see that we can actually see that they do have a net income of about 185 million so this is like their 2020 was like their first year of actually like making money actually having like a profit so before that you can see that they had quite substantial losses but that does make sense they're again they're an internet company and they're trying to grow um so with that being said let's get into the balance sheet so this is this is really what we want to see i mean we want to see cash and short-term investments grow and you can definitely say that here to go from 582 million to about 2.1 billion in cash that's very impressive good for them sounds like a good cfo um whoever that might be because you can clearly see that they're consistently trying to keep cash on hand for anything that might happen again internet furniture company um total current assets is about 3 billion and total current liabilities is about 2 billion so nothing you know nothing unheard of that's pretty good working capital again they sell physical product so this is a this makes sense and we can actually look at the total long-term debt yes it has grown but hopefully maybe we'll see something different in the cash flow statement as far as paying down debt and whatnot um and so let's get into the cash flow statement so if we look at the cash flow statement obviously we see our first positive net income 
um, in the company's history, it looks like most likely. And if I scroll down, I can actually see that acquisitions, they don't really acquire anything. Um, they do have subsidiaries. I'm not really sure what they are, but they do have some sub subsidiaries. And these acquisitions are, uh, you know, not really there. Um, but if we actually look at scrolling down long term debt issuances, here is that 2.2 billion. So they definitely took advantage of the pandemic and they decided to issue debt. Um, and they also bought back some shares, looks like 381 million. Um, but then they also made a $1.2 billion repayment. So they probably funded something um, here. This is what that tells me. They probably took out some long-term debt to fund. And then they also, at the same time, just decided to pay it down. Maybe they amortized it over the full year of 2020, where they took out this payment and they said, we're also going to pay back, you know, um, about a billion less, uh, but we're going to pay back like a large amount. So I guess we'll see where that ended up. Um, and you can see they have a positive uh, cash flow um, for, for some good good cash flow. So now let's get into a back test of the portfolio. So th this is going to be just for 2021 and I'll look at historically because it actually is a really cool historic chart. So uh, if you had invested in Wayfair at the beginning of this year, 2021, $10,000, you would have approximately 10,976. That's not too bad. That's, you know, um, that is, that's pretty good. Um, adjusted to inflation, that does come down, but a 9% return, that's not too bad, but that's that's not what we're looking for. So let's actually look at, let's go to the pandemic. So let's do 2020 to 2021. So almost two years worth of data. And now this is where it gets fun. So you can see that your $10,000, if you had invested at the beginning of 2020, actually became by the end of, you know, now 2021, 27,000. So that's a 69% compound annual growth rate over those just about, like I said, two years worth of data. But if we go further back to its IPO date, so it looks like Wayfair IPO'd on November 14th, uh, sorry, November 2014, and we have data from January 2015 to November 2021. So if we scroll down since their IPO, they basically have made, you know, your $10,000 over the last, what is it, six years, um, has made about 124000 That's 44% compound annual growth rate. That's, that's a big player. You know, that's up there with like, the Amazons, the Microsofts, the Apples, as far as like a CAGR. Like that's as good as it's gonna get. Like that's all that you can really ask for is a super good CAGR. So if we actually look at the annual returns, you know, Wayfair's last down year was in 2016. And that's pretty good to see in 2018 when the overall market was down, that Wayfair actually had a 12% return. So that's pretty rare. Um, you know, I, I actually think that's a really good sign. A lot of companies did not fare well in 2018. And you would think that an internet furniture company would be one of them. Uh, but 2016 was like their last bad year. Again, it was basically a year after their IPO. So it just kind of came down a little bit. But other than that, you know, they had a monster 149% return in uh, 2020, 129 in 2017, and 139 in 2015. So again, I just think that this company is actually going places and it'll be fun to see where it goes. So again, hope you guys like this video and subscribe.